Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. Welcome to the best gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news channel on YouTube. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation on PC and on Android with Citra. Now in yesterday's video, I mentioned there were three different versions of Citra. The stable release, the nightly release, and the canary release, and I was wrong. There is no stable release. I thought the one on the Google Play Store was the stable release, but it turns out it's just an outdated nightly release. So with that being said, if you're looking for the latest and greatest version of Citra, head to citra-emu.org and click on download here. And once you're on this page, click on manual download and you can pick it up for your platform of choice. There's the nightly build, which is the normal experimental build and the Canary build, which is arguably a little bit more experimental. And interestingly enough, there's a brand new Citra Nightly release, version 1987, and we've got a whole bunch of bug fixes here, including one for Mali GPUs. It fixes crashing with Mali GPUs when using OpenGL. And there's a fix here for the top screen being cut in half during cutscenes in Rabbit's Travel in Time 3D and more. But moving on, and we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on Android with NetherSX2. And NetherSX2 just got a brand new update to version 1.6. We've got some general performance and bug fixes. And a bunch of tweaks to a bunch of different games including Ace Combat 4. God's Hand, Animusha, Okami, and more. On top of that, there's a very interesting community fix here for Mali patches to Devil May Cry 3 USA versions. If you're interested in this one, I'll drop a link to the GitHub in the description below and feel free to check it out. Next up, we're talking about Metal Gear for the Sega Mega Driver, Sega Genesis, and this game was never officially released on the system. But Hoffman here is porting the game to the Mega Drive, and I'm very excited to see the finished product. If you wanted to see a video of it in action, I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below, and I guess feel free to check it out. And speaking about checking stuff out, check out Atari. They're re-releasing Outlaw for the Atari 2600 with brand new artwork, and priced at 60 bucks. So if Red Dead Redemption is too new of a game for you, you can always check out Outlaw. I'll drop a link to a YouTube video in the description below showing off some gameplay. And this video is from about 13 years ago, but the game came out back in 1978. Next up, we're talking about a Kickstarter for the NES. It's called Triple Jump, a platformer multi-cartridge for the NES. This thing has already met its goal and surpassed it by a considerable margin over double. So the three games on this cartridge are Micromage's Second Quest, Bobble, and Space Gulls. And they say the three games are 100% finished and work on a real NES console. They are running the Kickstarter campaign in order to raise funds for the cartridge box and manual. As for the reward tiers, there's a whole bunch of them here, and the only one that sold out is the limited pack, which sold for 120 bucks and contains some, well, limited stuff. As for the cartridge itself, it's selling for $52, and if you just wanted the ROMs, they are selling for about nine bucks. On top of that, if you wanted to check out the ROMs, you absolutely can, and I'll drop a link in the description below. From here you can see the ROM in action, and you can actually even pick it up if you wanted to. There's a name your own price option for it. Next up, we're talking about Starfield, and this news could be wrong because it's all based on Google Translate. But Starfield apparently will be getting modding support, according to Todd Howard. If you didn't want to wait for official modding support for Starfield, you can always head to nexusmods.com and pick up some mods from here that actually work. And on top of that, Hulk Hogan, who was behind the Cyberpunk 2077 HD reworked project and also the Witcher 3 HD reworked project, has just announced the Starfield HD reworked project making the game look a heck of a lot better. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to the YouTube video in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. If you're looking to mod the game without breaking anything, this might be the way to go. Next up, we're talking about Gearbox, the game studio behind the Borderlands series, and apparently it is up for sale. If you've got millions upon millions of dollars, you may be able to pick this one up from Embracer. At a high level here, it appears that Embracer had a business deal in place for about $2 billion, and then at the last minute, the business deal fell through. 
And Embracer shares fell about 40%, and now they're trying to recuperate some of that money. As far as I know, at this point in time, no final decisions have been made, but I wouldn't be surprised if a massive company like Microsoft or Sony swooped in and picked it up. And on a quick side note here, just some food for thought. Gearbox was bought by Embracer back in February of 2021 for $1.3 billion. That seems like that purchase may have been a mistake in hindsight. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about LMDE, which stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Linux Mint Debian Edition, depending on how you want to interpret that. If you don't mind experimenting, LMDE 6 was just released in beta format. If you don't like Ubuntu and you'd prefer something with a Debian environment, you may want to check out this release. It's based on Debian Bookworm 12.0. Next up, we're quickly talking about Google, and it appears that Google is headed to court thanks to the DOJ. Google owns a 90% market share, give or take, in the search engine space, and apparently they paid a ton of money to keep it that way. I'll drop a link to the article in the description below, and feel free to check it out. I will say, though, it does appear to be a little bit biased the way it's written, so just take it with a grain of salt. I'm really curious to see what happens in this court case, what questions are asked, and what answers are given. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. It's an antitrust case. And last up here, we're talking about Play Night. For those who may not be aware, Play Night is an open source video game library manager with one simple goal to provide a unified interface for all of your games, and it just got a brand new release. So at the time of filming, version 10.19 is the latest update. We've got some fixes and some improvements. We've got an option to control safe search settings when using web image search. And there's some fixes here for the UI freezing for a long time when downloading unavailable images via a web search. If you are curious about Play Night, I'll drop a link to it in the description below and feel free to check it out. And if you're currently using Play Night, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are about it. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.